If you spend any time looking at revision frameworks and techniques for your A-level exams, then you are no stranger to the multitude of advice that's out there. This can be a little bit intimidating, so I've done some research to help you out and I have identified two frameworks that you can use that should cover all bases for your revision to make it as easy as possible. So let's get straight into it and start talking about the spacing effect. Now what this demonstrates is that learning is most effective when we do our learning sessions in spaced out chunks. Spaced repetition is a method of reviewing your A-level and GCSE content at time intervals which gradually increase as you go along. For example, you will revise a topic for an hour and then not look at it again for a day. After day, you test yourself on the topic and then you don't look at the topic again for another three days. And so it goes on, you continue to increase the time between actively recalling information about a particular topic. This is also referred to as distributed practice or interleaved learning. Basically, they all mean the same thing. They mean testing yourself after a time period in which you allow yourself to not think about it. So you essentially forget the topic and then challenge yourself to remember. This is an evidence technique which has actually been used to help Alzheimer's patients improve their memory retention. Herman Ebbinghaus is the founder of this method and he suggested that information loss over time followed a curve but could be reset with repetition of active recall of a subject. It's the progressive expansion of the interval between recalling the subject that's key to this technique and is where your real learning takes place. One system that you can use is the lateness system. This is a method of spaced repetition that uses flashcards. You have a series of boxes which each indicate a time frame between which you will revisit the subject of the flashcards within that box. So to simplify this just for this video and to give you an example, let's say you have three boxes. Box number one will contain all of the cards that you will visit in your first revision session. And at the start of your revision, that'll be all of them because you haven't gone over anything yet. In your first revision session, go through these flashcards and all of the ones that you are able to answer questions about correctly or recall information about that topic correctly, you move into box two. Any that you get wrong or can't answer will just stay in box one. Your box one cards will then be reviewed at the shortest interval, so maybe every day you go over your box one cards. The cards you moved into box two will be reviewed at a slightly longer interval, let's say two or three days. When you do review your box two cards, any that you get correct again and are able to answer new questions about, not the same questions, but new questions about the same topic, get moved into box three. And any that you get wrong from box two, get moved right back down into box one. Your box three cards will then be reviewed at an even longer interval. So for example, let's say after a week, you will go back to box three. Using the same process as you did for the previous boxes, you then review these cards and any you get wrong, go back to box one. Um, that's what the original lateness system used, but if you want to be a little bit kinder to yourself, you can move them down to box two, whichever you think would be best for you. But you basically work through the boxes in this way and once in box three that you get right, you can keep in box three or you can add another box and just have an even longer time frame over which you will then revisit the box four flashcards. I really like this lateness system. I think it gives a really nice structure to your revision sessions and gives you a focus on the topics that keep getting moved back down and therefore need more work on. It's fantastic for reinforcing your memory skills and would work really well with our very fancy snap revised flashcards. So your spaced repetition can also be combined with some time management techniques such as the Pomodoro technique. You've probably heard of this one. I know that it's one that was very popular when I was doing my A-levels and one that I see all the time on TikTok and Instagram. With the Pomodoro system, what you do is you break up your revision into 25 minute chunks. Um, each chunk is called a Pomodoro. So you have four chunks in one whole session, which equates to around two hours of revision. What you do is you work for 25 minutes, you set yourself a task and you work consistently and focus really, really hard on that one task for the whole session. After 25 minutes, you have a five minute break before then starting another session for 25 minutes. After your four sessions, you then take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes, or if you're just going to do a two hour revision session, then you can call it a day there. The aim here is to do as much work as you can on a certain topic in the time you have available, rather than sitting at your desk and chipping away at something for hours on end. It seems counterintuitive to cut your time short to do the same amount of work that you may sit down and spend three or four hours on. But what this does is increase your focus and actually make you use your time more effectively. 
To make sure this method works, you have to stop working when that timer goes off. And though it's tempting to continue working when you feel like you can, you must stick to that revision session. Give this Pomodoro technique a, uh, a go in your space revision and see if it improves your focus when you sit down to revise. So with an appreciation for the importance of spaced out revision and making sure that you are going over all of your topics at different time intervals to really challenge your active recall, we now need to think about what you can actually do within those sessions. So the lateness system of using flashcards for your spaced out revision sessions is just one way that you can use your time However, there's another technique that you can use that will really solidify your learning and would work fantastically with spaced repetition of revision. So you might have heard of the blurting technique and this is a fantastic technique for actively recalling all of the information that you know about a certain topic to highlight where you have gaps in your knowledge and also just to challenge your brain to really retrieve this information on the spot. This is a good replication of exam conditions because obviously you will be sitting there and having to remember everything without any aid from your revision resources. However, this isn't the best technique for doing this. I think that the best technique is the Feynman technique. This technique gets its name from Richard Feynman, otherwise known as the Great Explainer. He was a very cool guy. He was an author, a physicist, a philosopher, along other great renowns, and pioneered the field of quantum electrodynamics. He had a brilliant mind and an incredible ability to think passionately about his subjects. And not only this, but he was also able to beautifully articulate complicated scientific concepts in his lectures. This was something he quickly became known for, breaking the tradition of scientific lectures as loquacious presentations containing all sorts of jargon that even the physicists in attendance would be discombobulated by, into these incredible presentations, almost telling a tale of the science as if it was some epic novel. Feynman was without a doubt a genius, and the techniques that he used to approach his own learning, we can apply to our A-level and GCSE learning. I found an article online which talked a bit about Feynman and according to this article, he had started a notebook that he titled Notebook of Things I Don't Know About. What he did with this notebook was dissect subjects within his area of expertise that he didn't know much about. He broke them down into their component parts and started to work on each of these parts so that he could piece them together again to form a good knowledge of a subject he previously knew nothing about. The essence of this approach is to break down complex subjects into smaller component parts that could be simplified to the point that even a child could read the summary and understand what's going on. To copy this in your A-levels, all you need to do is this. Get a piece of plain paper and write the name of the topic that you want to revise at the top. Next, write down everything that you know about this topic as much as you possibly can and do this in an organized way because this is going to become quite an important document for your revision. The key to this part of the Feynman technique is to be as precise and simple as you can in your summaries. Again, ask yourself if a child read this or if anybody outside of my A-level lesson read this, would they be able to understand? Once you've got absolutely everything down that you can think of, have a look through and write down things that you know you don't know. For example, um, if you know that there's an equation for respiration but you don't know what the equation is, that will be something that you know you don't know. This part is where we identify how we move forward with our revision. So once we've identified all the things we don't know, we can then go back and consult our revision notes and see what those bits are and how we can start committing them to memory. When you go through and fill the gaps in this document in terms of your knowledge, make sure you do this in another color because that's a fantastic way of tracking your progress through your revision because you can repeat this process again in a week or in a month's time and see how much the color ratios compare. Now the final stage of the Feynman technique or the Feynman approach to revision is to become Feynman yourself. Can you give a presentation on this topic that summarizes all of the essential information in a way that is engaging but also super, super informative? To get some inspiration into how Feynman himself did this, then just go on YouTube and have a look at some of his lectures because this guy was a real scientific legend. He was so cool and really you can see how passionate he is for his subject through the way that he talks about it. My personal favorite quotes of Feynman's are, I, a universe of atoms, an atom in the universe. 
and I learned very early on the difference between knowing the name of something and knowing something. He was a very cool guy. So like I said, this technique is basically the same as blurting, but I do think that the process behind the Feynman technique compared to blurting gives you the skills to become a much better scientist. A key part of being a scientist is communicating your research and reaching out to a general audience so that people can stay up to date and engaged with what you're working on. You want to captivate your audience and the best way you're going to do that is by using language that they are familiar with and by infusing them with your passion. So all you need for Eurovision is encapsulated in this video, spaced repetition of active recall and using techniques such as the Feynman technique or blurting or the lateness system to really challenge yourself to remember the things that you're learning in your lessons. Please do give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. Um, liking the video also saves it on your profile so that you can go back and watch it whenever you want to refer back to it. If you aren't already then please do subscribe to the Snap Revised YouTube channel just here. We have loads of content to help you with your A-levels in terms of teaching and also advice videos like this one. And if you want some more advice on your revision, check out this video just here, which talks about building motivation to get through your revision.